You knew it would come to this. Scott and Marcus were destined for Africa sooner or later. And not just Africa, but a hunt for the deadliest of the big five, the Cape Buffalo. They're in northern KwaZulu Natal province in South Africa, hunting with Shimanzi Zulu safaris. First morning, first flight in Africa, so we're gonna go uh, try and get a buffalo. That's our, our first uh, thing on the list that we're gonna try and hunt, and um, it'd be, it ought to be exciting. We got a lot of animals to kill. It's been one of those ones where we see that trophy buck in the morning at the head day one, and then we have to wait until day four to kill him. Dug a boy, thunder without rain, horn death, Whatever you call it, the Cape Buffalo's the meanest SOB on the block and about the toughest to stop. The first shot should be broadside in the heart-lung area, but if that fails and a charge comes, a headshot's the last resort. Went out and immediately we came over this ridge and I was kind of in a little in a state of uh, awe because of the scenery. This place is a living testament to all of God's creation right here, man. Beautiful. Okay, I'm, I'm ready to draw some blood. The first day, it was all about buffalo. Three hours into the hunt, we located a herd. Michael, you got eyes of an eagle. This is exciting. We're stalking a herd of buffalo right now. I'm trying to get Marcus, get Marcus on one of these buffalo. We worked our way through the tall grass, and the tall grass was a little unnerving. The grass is so tall that you can't hardly really see the buffalo. You can just see the tops of their backs. So we're trying to get over here where we can get a look at it, but they're a little worried that we're not going to be able to see the shoulder. So. I can't see. The bush is thick and the grass is tall. We just have to wait them out. Johan says, look, let's make a move. Let's try and get to a little higher ground to try and see in the herd, figure out where the, where the animals are with the, you know, a good mature bull. He looks like the one that I wanted from the beginning. What you're saying is that that's probably the best buffalo. That is a good buffalo. Have. Two bulls stood up between us and the herd. 50 yards from us. When they did, at that point, Johan said, that's a good bull, left one. Just break his shoulder, break his shoulder. Well, any time you're ready now. I got 300 grains of, of federal soft in him, and that, you know, that would stop a an 18-wheeler, probably. I sent this right into him. He didn't shake. It was a solid hit. I knew I hit him. This guy, he just kind of mm, and, and, and ran. I didn't have a shot, and the buffalo was gone. Scott and Marcus can't say they weren't told to expect something like this. Before leaving for Africa, they spent some quality time with veteran African professional hunter Jeff Rand on his Triple Seven Ranch in Texas, preparing for the possibility of dealing with charging buffalo. So this is a triple seven African dangerous game school. On a buffalo, the first two shots you would have soft nose typically. And that's so you don't get so much penetration, you go through one buffalo and hit another buffalo that's maybe in the herd. Once he's wounded and you go after him, maybe put all solid. Because he's coming at you and you want to get as much penetration as possible. See the buffalo in the bush there. You're going to take a shot at his shoulder. As the first shot goes off, this buffalo is wounded now is going to charge. And where are we supposed to shoot him? On a, on a charging buffalo, you want to shoot him right on the end of the nose. If it goes bad, that animal can kill you. So your first shot, right side, right barrel, front trigger on the buffalo in the bush there. Second shot, this buffalo is coming at you. Go ahead, take him right on the shoulder. Here he comes, here he comes, shoot! Oh, you shot his eye off. Good shot. That's fine. That would put him down. It wouldn't kill him. You know, you hear stories about Cape Buffalo. I always thought once you walked into them, they were charging. You know, 
just mean, nasty, and you know they're in your face, and you got to be careful because they're always going to be running at you. But any kind of a head shot would knock him down. He hit him, going for that opposite shoulder would have gone right through his heart, top of his heart, lung shot. That buffalo was probably going to run off and die. Buffalo ran off, and we started to track him. Normally, when you track an animal on blood and stuff like this, that's not. We didn't. We didn't track him like that. We tracked him by the the path he left through that savanna and and, and through that brush. And they should destroy everything in their path when they start running. They got a big old swath through here. I mean, it was like someone drove a truck through that. We found a little bit of blood. We followed them for about a mile, and we got on the herd again. They were about 300 meters from us. We just leave them be, Johan? No, I think if he can get a shot, and he can, can can try and shoot him. I say we cut bait. No, man, we got an opportunity. We need to we need to put one in him from here. He's gonna die. He ain't gonna die anytime soon. Well, what's your hurry? We're out here for 11 days. You'd rather shoot him and, and then run him into the into the valley? I'd rather kill him right now than wound him and try and chase him down the canyon. Johan? Yeah, I think give it a few minutes. Yeah, let's just wait it out. Yeah. If he gives us a good shot, we'll put a couple in him. And this oh. whole ordeal will be over with. It'll be breakfast time. Yeah, I just don't want to pressure them now. We must just stay there. Yeah, well, I got 180 grains that's going to pressure in here in a second. Dang it. Johan, the PH, said, look, let's back out. Let's give them a couple hours. Then we went back, we picked up their tracks, and we started tracking. Okay. So I went into the thick stuff. What? They went into the thick stuff, into the valley. How do you know where they went? It's true. It's true. But there's no blood on this trail. Yes, I know, but he, the last time you saw him was still there. There's no blood here, we have to check that out. This is not putting very much water right here. We're climbing down the side of this cliff. I've been on a lot of mountains, and I've crawled through a lot of valleys in my day and this one took it out of me. I mean, I stopped halfway down the mountain. I was just like, man, I feel like I'm back in Afghanistan. You always wanted to know what it was like to be in Afghanistan? Like this. Except people shooting at you and the ground was blowing up. So we spent that next, that whole day, the rest of that day chasing these jokers down into the valley of, of death. Ouch. Uh, ow. Mm. There were ticks all over us. I mean, it was awful. We run down in there, and we supposed to spend all day down in there looking for them. As a matter of fact, we didn't even see the herd. We are going to drive around and see where that group went, and we work from there. Is it going to be as much fun getting out as it was getting down here? I suppose it's going to be a little bit more fun. It's up to you. When we get back up the mountain, we push them back down to the valley again. I'm so tired, I don't even care about the snakes anymore. <laughs> oh man, am I whooped. It's a post-mortem. Without the mortem, a wounded buffalo on the loose. We tracked that animal all the second day. Now I don't see anything. We will go and look up there on that savanna and see if they came out during the night. Yeah, Michael just saw him there in the, in the thick stuff. They are going to try and push him out so that we can, can try and see. I didn't see him in there. We got a pretty good look at that herd, don't you feel like? Yeah, no, we got a very good look there. It's, you know, he's definitely not in that herd. Right. Definitely not. So you're convinced now that he's, that he's bedded down in the canyon? Yeah, he's down there in that canyon. Really what we're going to do now is just set up a grid and there's a big bottom area that's probably 50 acres in this canyon that we think he's in and we're just going to start raking it back and forth and see if we can stumble across it. My damn buffalo, I shot some Okay. 
Hang tight, Scotty, I'll be back. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll mosey down there, give y'all 20 minutes or so. Well, I did too, Scotty didn't even go down in the valley. I'm not going back down in that hole. I'm just telling you right now. He was just like, I'm not going down in that valley. You know, I'm just like, all right, man, go, you know, go have a pot pie and a coffee. I'll be back, you know? They're hoping, you know, that we're going to find a blood trail. And at this point, I think what we're looking for is a dead animal or a severely wounded buffalo, which is super dangerous. Hey, Johan. Yes. Just tell me where you got, I mean, I, I can go down in there. I'm not as slow as you think I am. So well, I go down in the valley with the pHs and stuff, and we, we look and look and look and look and look, and there's nothing down there. The third day, we brought in 17 trackers, and we just basically flooded the area, and we combed that whole valley where those buffalo went in, and we found nothing. So then we just decide, we're just like, all right, look, man, we'll, we'll find him, he'll show up, we're gonna go hunt. On about the fifth or sixth day, one of the game scouts said, that he saw a wounded buffalo. He saw a buffalo bleeding that was back in the herd. We find the herd and we start to make our stop. Still looking for Marcus's wife. We're packed in here two miles in this tall grass. And we spooked him 20 yards from us. We never saw him. We walked alongside him, but they busted out. How the hell did we miss that? Yeah, we're gonna walk back two miles to the truck, drive around the other side of the canyon. Michael's gonna see if he can push him up and hopefully we'll be over there on the other side. They're kicking our ass, man. They are, I can't believe this. They knew where we were going. They played this game. <laughs> we'll drive past, the wind is blowing towards them now. We'll Go try from and stop him. from the other side. The only problem is you can see the grass is very tall here. Yeah, so, it um, looks snaky to me. Yeah, I don't think you'll be able to, to see the shoulder, but we can have a look. We came back around the other side thinking they were going to push up the canyon. They just turned around and went back up yeah, the place cool. we left. Let's go. Where are we going? We're going to chase a buffalo again. As we were pushing out, we found a, a smaller herd of them, about six to eight of them. And we have spotted the buffalo. You have to be there for when that buffalo makes a mistake. So we push down in there. He's got the ox pecker on his back. Okay, right on his neck. On his neck. On his neck. Johan moved Marcus into position. Set up the sticks, I get on there. Yeah, oh yeah, thank you. No burn on his back. Are you good? No burn on his back. He's looking at us? Yes. I'm going to shoot him in the shoulder. Go. Oh, he's falling. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Uh, throw my safety off and go to squeeze the trigger. I didn't have my safety all the way off. And Marcus is upset. He's off the charts. Man, you see me having a problem, man. Take a shot. I'm not going to shoot. I'm not taking the shot. That ain't the deal. I'm giving you the, the shot. The deal was we need to get a buffalo on the ground, right? Yeah? Is that the deal? No. That's not the deal. No. But the look on Johan's face when we've tracked this thing for seven days, we get within 50 yards. I mean, I know what he was had to be thinking. I mean, as a PH, you're going, golly, well, you know, what do I got to do? Okay, we just pushed them off a little bit. Let's just give them some space. They moved a little bit in the trees. We finally made our way within about 50, 60 yards of them. Yeah, that's him. That's him. You turn to the left. He's walking. Yes. Right there. Also on the Behind the cow. No shot. Next thing you know, we push up, we stock on them. They're there. See the one sitting on the open? It's not the one in the oak, it's the one to the right of it. Find that big green boy. Yeah, that's him. That's him. And the big boy that we were looking for was just behind a bush. Please step forward. Step into that tree. And these buffalo did not move an inch. 
crushed it. It's unbelievable how these things are evading us. And he's six inches from stepping out. They didn't just move, let's just wait him out. And they wouldn't move and we wouldn't move. I mean, it was a standoff. Finally, comes broadside to me. Heads up, heads up, heads up. Going hot. Yes. Okay. Good, 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 good. Down, down, He's down. down. You see? You see? Yeah. Be careful. Let's get ready, Marcus. Okay, get that. Get it. You stay. Not only are you excited about the shot and the animal, but you're scared to death a little bit at the same time. I really don't understand how violent these things can be, I don't guess, because I was just kind of walking straight up on him, and you could tell Johan, you could see it in his face and the way, in his demeanor, the way he was approaching that buffalo. Marcus, congratulations. Good job, buddy. Thank you. You know, and there was a sobering experience to it, almost a, a reverence or a sadness to the fact that, you know, this huge, beautiful animal uh, has been harvested. And it was something in, that I've never really experienced in my 30 years of hunting. You know, I guess it was bittersweet. I, you know, we, I can't even really describe our feelings. I think we were all glad that it was, that we finally, you know, it was finally over. I've never hunted anything like that. I mean, just the fact that, that he made me work as hard as he did just to, just to get, to, you know, take him down was, uh, was something else. And I'll never forget it. I have the utmost respect for him.